from the creator of Thunderbirds, Jerry Anderson brings you five legendary television productions. Fireball XL5, starring Steve Zodiac. All I know is that somewhere out there, there's a living creature in distress. I can't let that call go unanswered. Known Steve Zodiac not help anyone in trouble. Space 1999 stars Martin Landau Fire! and Barbara Bain. Party of seven, a reconnaissance party. Should have been back hours ago. The Secret Service. This is an assignment for the Bishop. British Intelligence Service Headquarters. Operation Priest. Starring Father Stanley Unwin, the country vicar who's also a secret agent. All that true words, speed of your pen slowed must deceive my eyeballs. Supercar, starring Mike Mercury. We are ready to blow. I repeat, we are ready to blow in 60 seconds from now. Repeat, 60 seconds. It's the marvel of the age. Supercar. Supercar. The Protectors, the worldwide freelance crime-fighting organization starring Robert Vaughan. This is Harry Root. I want time on the computer. Nairi Dawn Porter. Never neglect the police. They can be very useful. And Tony Anhalt. Right. We spotted the girl. What about the rifle? Even with a telescopic sight, it can't be that far away. But there's no sign of it. Keep looking. Five fantastic adventures from the amazing world of Jerry Anderson. And it can journey anywhere. Supercar, supercar. It travels on land or roams the skies through the heavens' stormy rage. It's Mercury Man, and everyone cries. It's the marvel of the age. Supercar, supercar. really works, Dr. Beaker. Now try the engine noise suppressor. was a close shave. Maybe you'd better let me try. Yes, yeah, certainly. Uh, bring her into land. I don't see her. Where is she, Dr. Beaker? Up there. Now to bring her down. Right rudder. Down a bit. Slow into vertical. Steady. Down. Down a bit. Motor's off. Well, Dr. Beaker, that's some gadget you've got there. Most satisfactory, I agree. Well, if the test is complete, I suggest we put Supercar away for... Uh, no, don't do that. I, I, I beg your pardon? You must take off for Karakan at once. Prince Norid Hassan is lying dangerously ill after a riding accident. Karakan. Uh, that is somewhere in Central Asia, is it not? And somewhere so inaccessible that only Supercar can reach it in time. I have the medical supplies already. Gee, Professor, you mean we're gonna take medical supplies in Supercar? Just think, a trip across the world to help a real prince. 
It's like something out of the Arabian Nights. Let's go, then. Have to refuel, but that won't take a minute. Take her in, Doc. Of course. At once. Gee, I sure hope we find the prince in time. And how is the prince today? He is not well, O Most Powerful. I am afraid he may die. That would be a tragedy for you, my dear, but not, I think, for me. Indeed, it might be most convenient. You would not let him die. <laughs> Fortunately, the matter is not in our hands, Princess. There is nothing we can do. Karakan has no contact with the outside world. How can we help him? Then go. You would see him dead. But I shall not let him die. Go. We will see. Tanks full. Engines charging at 15,000. You got everything, Doc? Uh, I think so. Uh, plaster, splints. Penicillin and uh, streptomycin, just in case. Good. In that case, let's go. Fire one. Fire two. Ready, Professor? Ready, pilot. Roof doors opening now. You okay, Jimmy? Mitch? Sure, Mike. I'll see he behaves himself. <laughs> Full throttle vertical. You know where we're going, Doc? Uh, certainly. Uh, Karakhan is only about uh, uh, four hours away. It may be difficult to find, you see. It's, it's so isolated. We'd better get roughly to the area and search around ourselves, is that it? I'm afraid so. Well, it won't be the first time. Supercar always breaks new territory. Should be somewhere nearby now, Doc. It's getting late. I sure hope Mike finds it soon, Mitch. We must be hundreds of miles out in the desert, and there's no one to help us. <laughs> I guess that's why this is the sort of job only supercar can do. Ordinary planes couldn't get this far. I think I see it, Doc. Over there. Yes, it's something. That must be it. Going down. What are we gonna do, Mike? Well, this is how I figure it, Jimmy. We'll look for the palace. That's where we'll probably find the prince. And then we'll go down and I'll explain who we are. Then Dr. Beaker can do his stuff with the penicillin. Right, Doc? Certainly. Right. Select vertical. I think this will surprise them, but I'll bet they'll give us some welcome when they see what we've got on board. Delight! Of a thousand suns. What is it, Garth? I have seen a magic carpet, Excellence. It is come to rest in the palace courtyard. What is this fool's talk? It is the truth, O oh, ruler of the stars. Listen, fool. Go back whence you came and let me hear no more talk of magic carpets. Or oh, by the prophet, I'll have your ears cut off. Yes, Excellence. Well, that's funny. There's nobody here. Well, uh, perhaps they're suspicious. Anyway, there's a door over there. Let's try it. We can leave the medicine chest and supercar for now. Excellence! Four people are coming this way. Oh, son of sons. They have come from the flying machine. And one of them... He's a monkey. Dog, did I not tell you to speak no more of magic carpets and flying machines? And now you babble of monkeys. <coughs> what is that? <coughs> bow this instant. Bow before Alif Bey, the regent prince of a thousand kingdoms and ruler of the sun and stars. Well, if, if, if you insist. Sorry to bust in like this, Your Highness, but we've just flown thousands of miles with medicines for Prince Nurid Hassan. Back 
Infidel! You would lie in order that you should see the prince, would you? The prince is sick, is he not? Now hold it, Doc. This guy means business. Okay, Mr. Aleph Bay. We know when we're not wanted. But I'd like to know why you don't want the prince cured. The prince Hassan's health or life is no concern of yours. Guard! Magnificent! Lock these strangers up! Uh, here, I, I say, uh, just a moment. Save it, Doc. Better not argue with guns. Oh, really? I, I, I don't think much of your hospitality. These quarters are luxury for peasants such as you. But what about the prince, Mike? We've got to try and help him somehow. The Prince Hassan, young infidel, is beyond your reach. See, across the courtyard. <laughs> you see that lighted window? That is where the Prince Hassan and his sister, the Princess Medina, are. Not far, but for you, they might as well be a thousand miles away. But aren't you going to let us try and cure the prince? I have no wish that he should live. If he dies, I rule the kingdom of Karakhan. And to make it more certain, I shall marry the princess Medina myself. Tomorrow. After that, I will decide what is to be done with you. <laughs> Until tomorrow, then. Happy dreams. We've got to try and help them, Mike. Hassan, my brother, you are awake. I cannot understand it. But while you slept, I thought I saw a strange flying machine come from the sky. A flying machine? A dream, surely. I am not sure, Hassan. There's something strange below in the courtyard. I cannot see clearly. I think we're stuck, Jimmy. If we could get to supercar somehow, it would be different. But we can't. Unless anybody happens to have a file around here. No file, I'm afraid. Uh, but we have this. How did you sneak that console in here? Well, it is supposed to be a pocket-sized console, you know. That's great, Doc. Now maybe we can do something about the prince. But how, Mike? Well, we can't get to supercar because of these bars. But Supercar can get across to the Prince's room without us. It may be a little chancy in the dark, you know, Mike. That's a risk we'll have to take. Jimmy, get over by the door and listen. Sing out if you hear anybody coming. Supercar is going on a short, pilotless flight. Charging starboard. This thing hasn't got a rev meter, Doc. No. A warning light will flash when the engines are ready to fire. Okay. Gee, I sure am glad we fixed that noise suppressor. You can fire... now. Right. Fire one. Fire two. So far, so good. All clear, Jimmy? No noise, Mike. Quiet, Mitch. <laughs> Hush, do you want everyone to hear us? Better they should hear Mitch than supercar. Taking off now. Half throttle, vertical. That sound. It is the same as I heard when the strange flying machine came down. That's better. She's up to our level now. You left the first aid kit on the front seat, didn't you, Doc? That's right. Well, here goes. I'm afraid the princess is in for a shock in a few seconds. Light of a thousand suns. Don't be afraid. We have come to help you. We have brought you healing medicine for the prince. Come and take it from the seat of the flying machine. Hope she's not too scared to do what we say. 
Take the box off the front seat, Princess. But, but I do not understand. You will, Princess, when you try the contents on the Prince. Quick, take the box before we're seen. All right, all right. Whoever you are, I will. I'm taking it now. Good for you. Tell us when you've got it. I have it, and thank you. Good girl. She's taken it. Now let's get Supercar down again before we're spotted. Mike, I can hear the guard. I think he's moving away. I thought I heard the sound of that machine. Thanks, Jimmy. Better get down fast, Doc. By the prophet! It cannot be. Engines cut. Operation complete, men. Now let's play it cool. They have escaped, oh Prince of Sons. The Americans have escaped. How? How can they have escaped, fool? I do not know, but they are flying their machine outside. I saw it with my own eyes. Take me to their rooms, dog. We will see if you are dreaming or not. I see no flying machine. If you have brought me here for nothing, fool. So, they have escaped, eh? See for yourself. Check. They are playing chess. So, the Americans are flying around in their machine. Perhaps they are going to the moon, idiot fool. But, uh, but. But what? You have been sleeping instead of keeping watch. Now, tell me no more lies. Oh, I will have your head cut off! Okay, Mike, they've gone. At least Aleph Bay has. Now what? Now we try to get out of here, that's what. But how, Mike? We can't get through those bars. And not even Supercar can do anything about them without making a terrific noise. Oh, yes, it can, Jimmy. I've got a little idea to take care of those bars. <laughs> There, Hazan. You are better already, I think. I was afraid you would die. But for these medicines, I might have done. But now, all I need is rest. Where are the people who brought us this? I do not know, Hazan, for I have not seen them. Only their wonderful machine. As for them, I do not know where they are or what they are doing. I reckon we could cut through these bars in a couple hours, Doc. If we had a saw, yes. Well, there's a file in Supercar's toolkit. Yeah, Mike, but we can't get at it. We couldn't squeeze through the bars. We can't, but Mitch could. Couldn't you, Mitch boy? <laughs> uh, uh, do you think we can make him understand what we want? We can try. Jimmy, can you keep guard at the door again? Sure thing, Mike. Then here goes. Charging port. I'll bring her up here as soon as I can. They may be on the lookout for us now. Fire bolt. Up she comes. <laughs> right. I'll try and hold her steady. Come on, Mitch boy. Show us what you can do. <laughs> Hurry, Mike. I think I can hear the guard moving. I do not believe it. I am not going to look. No, not a screwdriver. A file. Come on, Mitch. Try again. Fetch us the file. I think I can hear that flying machine again. Listen. You are right. But what can they be doing? <laughs> that is a wrench, my dear chap. Now try again. <laughs> no. It is nothing. By the prophet, I dare not look. It cannot be the Americans. Good boy. Now don't drop it. Come back in, Mitch. Yeah, come on, Mitch. We must have wakened the whole city by now. It is the Americans' machine. <laughs> Trouble. Better get her down fast. Hurry, Mike. 
And what are you shooting at, idiot? Do not tell me the Americans are escaping again. No, Highness. Uh, that is, yes, they are. I fired at the machine, Excellence. It was in the air, outside the window of their room. So, we shall see. <coughs> you dog, I am surrounded by fools. They are still there. They... They cannot be. You will remember this tomorrow. I swear it. See for yourself. <coughs> now hear me well, guard. I wish to sleep. Tomorrow I marry the Princess Medina. And if you disturb me once more with stories of flying Americans... But no, Excellence. It shall not happen again. Good. Now stand guard and do not sleep. There. That should hold our weight. But why not bring Supercar up again? Uh, climbing ropes isn't really in my line, you know. I'm afraid you'll have to this time, Doc. If we're going to do anything about Aleph Bay, we'll have to use surprise. You cannot get up so soon. I can, and I shall. Was this not the day Aleph Bay swore he would marry you? It was, but you are still too weak to stop him. He shall not do it. I am still alive, and by the prophet, while I am still alive, I rule Karakan and not Aleph. And today I become ruler of Karakan. Soon the city will awaken, and at noon we will have a wedding. In the meantime... Yes, Prince of the Sun. I have not forgotten your dreaming, fool. But I have no time to attend to you now. Go and fetch the Princess Medina. I would speak with her. At once, excellent. Is it, uh, safe? Of course it's safe, Dr. Beaker. How do you think we got down here? Hurry, Dr. Beaker. Somebody may see us. Oh, very well. I'm coming. No. This time I am not dreaming. It is broad daylight. And they are escaping. <laughs> I admit, definitely exciting. Did you bring the portable console with you? I can't have left it up there. Ah, I know. It is in my pocket. Good. I think Aleph Bay is in for a little surprise. What is it? Where is the Princess Medina? Highness, I have bad news. The Americans... If you tell me once more that the Americans have escaped, I will cut your tongue out and feed it to the jackals. But, excellent! Be silent! I order you to be silent! Fire one. Fire two. Why don't we go in Supercar ourselves, Mike? We've done pretty well so far with this gadget, haven't we? Sure we have, Mike. Then let's carry right on using it, huh? Half throttle vertical. Why do you not obey me? Go and fetch the Princess Medina. That sound, it is the American silent. I do not believe it. their machine. Shoot them! Shoot them! Drop your gun! 
<laughs> there is no one there. It is the devil. That's right. Thank you. What? You have escaped. <laughs> enough, enough. I give in. All right, Mitch. Come down from there. <laughs> now, take us to Prince Hassan. No need. I am here. Good morning, Alif Bey. As you can see, I am recovered, thanks to these gentlemen. And as for you... No. Take it away from me, this animal. I will go in peace. We thank you, Mike Mercury. But for you, I might have been dead by now. I do not understand your machine. But for us, it will always be the magic carpet. Well, I'm afraid there's nothing magic about supercar. To me, Mike Mercury, there will always be something magic about supercar. As swift as can be, watch it flying through the air. It travels in space or under the sea, and it can journey anywhere. Supercar, supercar. It travels on land or roams the skies through the heavens' stormy rage. It's Mercury man, and everyone cries. It's the marvel of the age. Supercar. Supercar! Supercar! Here they are for one and all The moments are about to call Come on and sit down here with me They're here for you on your TV They are the moments They are the moments So come with me, give me your hand I'll take you up to Moomin Land You can fly just like a bird And sing the best song ever heard There were the moments 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 Ba 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 It was a lovely day, and Moomin, his family and friends, decided to go for a trip in the boat they'd found washed up on the beach. They didn't know where they were going, and thought it would be much more fun that way. Mama, we're not going away forever, you know. I hope not. I don't think we'll need all these pots and pans. It's best to be prepared at sea. What do you mean? Well, you'll only complain if you don't get a hot meal. I never complain. And you know how hungry the sea air made you all last time we went out on a boat. You would have been glad of food then. Mm, you've got to rough it a bit if you want an adventure. Yes, but it will be more fun with coffee and pancakes. <laughs> Aren't you two ready yet? <laughs> Hi, Snork Vegan! Miss 
Can't you use that ladder? <sighs> I'm all right. Moomin, you're gonna hurt yourself one of these days. It's good practice. Is North coming with us? He says he hasn't got time for sailing boats at the moment. I'd much rather a real sailing boat than a paper flying ship any day. Are Mama and Papa ready yet? They're packing up half the kitchen. Oh, it's too full. Have we got to take all that with us? Well, Mama thinks it's better to be safe than sorry, and she's usually right. Tell me, Moomin, where exactly are we going? We haven't decided yet. That's right. Wait and see. Unfortunately not. There are lots of these in Moomin Valley already. Goodness, where are you taking all that? We're going sailing. How exciting, charting new seas and exploring desert islands. You never know. If I help you load up the boat, can I please come with you? Sniff, any sign of the Moomins? Not yet. It's a great day to go sailing. I wonder where we're going. I don't have any idea. Uh, I don't actually like sailing much. Do you get sick? Well, not really sick. It's just that I can't swim. And if it's rough, it frightens me, and I panic a bit. It looks like it's going to stay calm. So don't worry. Right, that's the lot. Now all aboard. Mama, Little Mai, Snuffkin, Moomin, Snork Maiden, and Mr. Hemulin, of course. <laughs> Isn't he a bit old for adventures? Not at all, no. Moomin Papa has promised to find a deserted island where I shall search for rare plants. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> Come on, Sniff, hurry up! There's no room. Don't be silly, Sniff. Of course there is. It looks very full, almost sinking. There's no way this boat could sink. Now come on, get in. Oh. Really? I promise it'll be all right, won't it, Papa? Well, if it stays like this, it will, Moomin. Mm, I'll come next time. Let's go, Moomin Papa. He's just a scaredy cat. Mm. Mm, we'll go without you then, Sniff. Mm, I think that will be best. Anyway, someone had better stay and look after Moomin House, and it might just as well be me. That's very thoughtful of you. There's a pancake on the kitchen table that you can have for lunch. Thank you, Moomin Mama. Have a nice trip. Sniff had come. He's a big softy. Well, he's not very good at swimming, and he does eat rather a lot. This is the life, isn't it, Mama? It certainly is, dear. Oh, look, not a breath of wind. Shall I start rowing, Papa? Yes, you'd better get Snufkin to help you. Aye, aye, Captain. You'll have to do better than that. 
We're doing our best. You two would be useless as galley slaves. It's good that we're not then, isn't it? So then, what's your excuse? It's not easy rowing against the tide. You try it. Oh dear, at this rate I shall be lucky to find one rare plant. Well, Mr. Hamulin, you could always try collecting some seaweed instead. There's plenty of that. I have heard tales that if you whistle, those who perished at sea will send you a wind. Land! Ahoy! Look, Moomin, Papa! That's too small to be any good. You're right. Papa, we're moving again. The tide's turned and the wind's up. What a beautiful island. And a perfect place to land, too. Oh, I bet this place has got some rare plants. Now be careful when you explore. There could be wild animals there. Now, if someone will go and collect some wood, I'll get a fire started. I bet none of you will say no to coffee and pancakes. Watch me, you land lovers. I'll go and pull the boat ashore. <laughs> I suppose you were right. This will come As ahead. I said, Papa, it's always better to rough it with a little bit of luxury. I wonder if we're the first to set foot on the island. Thank you, children. Is there anything else you want us to do? No, I don't think so. Is it okay if I go explore the island? Of course. Off you go. Coming, Snort Maiden? I'll stay and help Moom and Mama with the cooking. Mama, you said we needed firewood. Is this enough? My goodness, what a lot! You know, I don't think anyone lives on this island. I haven't seen anyone, unless they're hiding in the bushes. I've seen someone. Oh yeah? Who? Well, they weren't very big. What do you mean? This big? Well, same as me. What did they look like? Sort of white and ghostly and not very friendly looking either, Moomin. Well, you probably just thought you saw something, little Mike. I did see them. I did too. Keep your hair on. I'm not saying you didn't see anything. Goodness, this is magnificent. Oh, what a find. <laughs> And what's this? <laughs> oh. oh, well. Well, well, well. I've never seen such rare and beautiful plants. Now, oh, what's this? Goodness, it's a barometer. Now, let's see. Rain and storm. Probably broken. Hello, who are you? Oh, I see. This is your barometer, is it? Now watch it. Mind you don't trample on those flowers, will you? Uh, oh, no, 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 no. They're coming to get me. No, go away. No, go away. Uh, uh, uh. I think what little Mai saw was a Hattie Fattener. They're not ghosts, are they, Snuffkin? No, they look kind of like it, but uh, they're really harmless enough, Moomin. Oh, leave me alone! Oh, Go dear, away. what on earth was that? It sounded like Mr. Hamulin! <laughs> oh, get away! Oh, help me, please! <laughs> Thank you.
It's Mr. Hamulin. Help! Get me down! Why are they after you, Mr. Hamulin? What'd you do to them? I don't know. I just tapped on this post and asked them to be careful Is that of the all? flowers. They seem a bit angry to me. Well, then I tapped the barometer to check the weather and they came at me. Well, I don't think it's the flowers they're mad about. Maybe they thought you were trying to steal their barometer. I don't want it. They can keep it. My goodness, I'm collecting flowers, not barometers. Well, hang on. I can't hang on much longer. Hurry, please. They don't look so easily frightened. No. Now, let me think. Hurry, I'm slipping! I've got it, Mr. Hemulin. The Hattie Fattners can't see or hear very well, but they are very sensitive. We'll have to try and frighten them. I suggest you shake the post as hard as you can. <laughs> like this? Harder! Harder, Mr. Hemulin! Look! They can feel the ground moving. Keep going, Mr. Hemulin! I'm getting very tired. I'm exhausted. I can't You're not going, Snuffkin. Longer. Are you sure this will work? You can stop now, Mr. Hemulin. Mr. Hemulin! Oh, dear. Hey, are you all right, Mr. Hemulin? What disgusting creatures. I've a good mind to take their precious barometer. I don't think that's such a good idea. It's no good anyway. It's not working. How do you know that, Mr. Hemulin? Look, it's a beautiful day, isn't it? But according to this barometer, it should be pouring down with rain. This is the way to explore real home cooking. Yeah, it just takes a little thought. <laughs> and Moomin Papa is always prepared, aren't you, dear? Double zero. It can't get any lower than that. What does that mean? If it was working, it would mean we'd be in for a terrible storm. Hmm. Yeah. I think the reading might be right after all, Mr. Hemulin. See the way the sky is darkening? Look at those storm clouds. We better go before it's too late. But there won't be time to get home. We'll be shipwrecked, Moo and Papa. Surely there's still time. We don't want to go back to Moomin Valley yet. We've only explored half the island. Besides, you never know what we might find, Snork Maiden. I wanted to get my hands on those Hattie Fatners. That's the last thing I want to do, Little Mind. The very last. I think we ought to leave now. What do you think, Mama? Well, you're the captain, dear. It's up to you. So I am. Now let me think. We'll stay. Oh, can we? Yes, but we must put the tent up before it starts raining. What tent? Always be prepared. That's my motto. You're very clever to think of everything. First, we must lower the sails and pull the boat up so that she's out of harm's way. Uh. 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 That should do it. Oh. Oh. Well done, everybody. Uh, it should be safe here. <laughs> now hurry with the tent. The storm's nearly here. <laughs> uh, are you all right, Mr. Hemulin? You stay here and rest. Uh, we'll manage without you. <laughs> uh, I am a bit tired. You get your breath back first, but don't forget to tie the boat to that tree before you come up. <laughs> it looks bad. A real humdinger. You can trust me. Right, let's get that tent up. Oh, dear, what a day. Uh. 
before. Snuff kid? What's happening? It's coming really fast. Look at the rain over the sea. We're gonna get soaked if we stay here. Just a minute. But we'll get wet. I know, but it's so exciting. Huh? Things which you have no control over. You can see this great big storm coming towards you, and you can't do anything about it. No. You have to time it just right. Uh, uh, when to make a run for shelter, you mean? I knew you'd understand. I wonder what the Hatty Fatteners are doing. Waiting for the thunderstorm. Why? Because they get energy from the electricity and the lightning. Really? That's it. Come on. Uh, I've never seen rain like It'll it. It'll be over soon enough, Moomin. You're dressed, Moomin. I know. Oh! It's all right. I'll look after you. Too close. I think it's over, Snork Maiden. What a find I made today! If, like the Moomins and their friends, you're stranded on a desert island in a huge storm, all you can do is wait until it's blown itself out. But what if the waves are so high that your boat is caught up and washed out to sea? That is a different story altogether.
The interference is certainly getting worse, Commander. Yeah. Seems as though all our space communications are breaking down. That cloud of gas we discovered yesterday appears to be causing it. I guess it's interfering with our radio waves in much the same way sunspots do. It's getting closer to Earth, that's for sure. What do you think it is, sir? I don't know, Lieutenant. It's a new one on me. Sir, it could be atomic particles from a space explosion. Yeah, I didn't mention that, Lieutenant, because, uh, well, it's the obvious explanation. Which sectors are you still in contact with? Four, five, and eight, sir. Then order the nearest fireball to disperse that cloud of dust, Lieutenant. Message understood, Lieutenant. XL-18. Signing off. XL-18 to Space City. I'm approaching cloud now. I sure am picking up some weird noises. It blew up, sir. The XL-18 blew up. It must have gone too close. Diverted the XL-24. He should rendezvous with a smoke cloud in three hours time, sir. You'd better tell him not to get too close. Yes, sir. This begins to look like a job for Colonel Zodiac. I've lost contact with the XL-5, sir. I know. I wish I hadn't sent Venus on that medical mission. XL-5 calling Five Old Junior. Are you going to be much longer, Steve? A couple hours, maybe. Any news from Space City? Can't reach him, Steve, but I'm still trying. Okay, Professor. I'll call you as soon as Venus has finished the inoculations. Come in. Oh, come in, Doctor. Take a seat. Thanks. Well, I've just about completed my work here, Colonel. Oh, no. I was kind of hoping that you'd stay around. Those exploration guys don't often get such attractive visitors, you know. Well, thank you for those kind words, Colonel Hudson. Now, will you please roll up your sleeve? Oh, say, uh, are you really going to use that thing on me? <laughs> well, you're just as likely to catch restamesia as anyone else. These space diseases don't pick and choose, Colonel. And if the epidemic reaches here, you and your men will go down like Denpin. Ow! Ouch! Well, thanks for all your help. Well, you, uh, you sure you won't stay? I'm afraid duty calls, Colonel. Perhaps you'd be kind enough to radio Space City and let them know we're all through here. Afraid I can't do that, Dr. Venus. Uh, we haven't been able to contact Earth for two days. Sure be boss to get back to Space City, Venus. Oh, you can say that again. I wonder if Matt's managed to get through to Space City yet. Any luck yet, Matt? Um, no, nothing so far. The radio's okay. Must be atmospheric trouble. Okay, Matt. Keep trying. Ah, uh, me. And, 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 not now, Zuni. Can't you see I'm busy? <laughs> Zuni. Bristamizia. 
Oh, I'm a real tooty, Steve. All those injections, and I forgot Zuni. Well, he'll be okay, won't he? Well, I'll give him an inoculation immediately. He should be all right in a couple of days. wrong with a television picture. Now, don't disturb your father, Jonathan. Can't you see he's asleep? I am not sleeping. And there's nothing wrong with that TV either. It's just interference. We're getting it all over, Space City. <laughs> oh, gee, Pop. I wanted to watch it. Commander Zero, please. Just one moment, Lieutenant. It's for you, honey. What is it, Lieutenant? Sorry to disturb your sleep, Commander. I wasn't sleeping, do you hear? Yes, sir. The XL-24 is approaching the cloud area. I'll be right over. XL-24 to Space City. Come in, please. Reading you at Strength 2. Now remember, don't get too near that cloud. Roger, Commander. <laughs> Zuni, and it's all my fault. Still, you'll soon be better. Well, if that's how Restamasia affects you, I'm glad I had that injection. I'll stay with him for a little while, Steve. Okay, Venus. I'll get back to control. We must be approaching Earth. Steve, can you come up to the navigation bay? It's urgent. Okay, Professor. I wonder what Matt's so excited about. What's the matter, Matt? Yeah, I'm not sure, Steve, but I picked up the XL-24 on the astroscope. The XL-24? What's it doing in this sector? I don't know, but there's some mighty tooty things going on. XL-24 calling Space City. Range now, 3-2, a zero white. Take it easy, fella. Take it easy. Use the radio, Professor. Ask him what he's doing. Yeah, I've been trying, Steve, but there's so much interference going on. Seems that cloud's causing it. Look. He's bringing out the interceptors. Interceptors at the ready. Funny. I can hear a sort of chattering. Oh, no. Not again. XL-24 destroyed. I know that, Lieutenant. Order all available craft to that area. I can, sir. All our communications are failed. We can't call anybody. It just exploded. I'm not so sure. What do you mean by that, Steve? I'm positive something came out of that cloud just before the explosion. I can play the recording, Ben. Make it in slow motion. up to the explosion now hold it right there professor yes that's a missile okay we've seen enough then there is something or somebody inside that cloud jamming all our instruments and moving towards the earth what are we sitting here for prepare the interceptors <laughs> Six, three, zero, wide and counting. Nine, eight, seven, six, 
Five, four, three, two. No closer, Matt. One, zero, ignition, five. To our mission, Steve. It didn't explode. What's that noise on our radio, Steve? I don't know, Venus. Sounds like somebody talking. Okay, Steve. I'm putting it through the language decoder. The Earth people are putting up a fire, but they will soon realize that their weapons are useless. Nothing will stop us conquering their planet. Now we know what we're up against, Steve. An invasion fleet. And we're powerless to stop them. <laughs> Just hanging in the sky, sir. Obviously, Lieutenant, which at least proves it's no ordinary cloud. Atomic particles, eh, Lieutenant? <laughs> what a tooty idea. Yes, sir. I'm taking no chances. See that everyone at Space City is armed. Of course not, sir. You don't think I would have done that if it had been working, do you? I was just trying to tell you that the ray guns aren't working either. We're unarmed, Commander. Remain in Earth orbit. Remain in Earth orbit. But this is ridiculous. Relax, Venus. Relax. The Earth's being invaded, and all we do is sit and drink coffee. We don't like it any more than you do, but we've got to wait until we know the score. Yes, yeah, Steve's right. We may be the Earth's last chance. We can't land until we're sure. Why all this waiting? Whoever they are, they must know they've got us where they want us. The waiting's over, sir. Look! Coming this way, sir. Maintain Earth orbit. Okay, Robert. You don't have to keep repeating yourself. <coughs> Anything on the radio yet, Matt? Nope. Still completely jammed. I think we should land, Steve. Oh, no, Venus. We'll stay up here. Maintain Earth orbit.
。好，陈龙一红，我来，这一红啊，哎，张亮，我不唱。I shall、uh, talk in your language. Come on, let's go. What's the idea of this this invasion? We have taken over space city. In a short time, we shall control your planet. I cannot expect a man of your low intelligence to understand that. So, I will translate. Oh, shut up, you great tooth! Silence. That message told me we are in complete control here. I hadn't forgotten. One of your fireball ships, the XL5, is orbiting the Earth. You will order it to land. Why should I? You just said you're in control here. I don't obey my commands. Ah,、oh, you will die. Ah,、oh, go ahead and pull the trigger, blabbermouth. Your insults don't impress me. You have five seconds to decide. Five, four, three, two. Hey, pop. What's going on? Hey, who are these characters? Let go. A pop will bust you one. Now it's time to see what the deal is. What's your name, Tom? My lieutenant tells me that this aggressive young man is your son. <laughs> Perfect timing. I'm sure your son's life means much to your commander. And now I think we can't persuade you to change your mind. Space City calling XL5. Space City calling XL5. Hey Steve,、uh, did you hear that? Commander Zero's calling. Okay, Matt, I'll take over. What's going on down there, sir? Are you receiving me? Receiving you loud and clear. It's okay to land. Yes, sir. But what happened? I'll tell you when you land. I'm signing off. XL5 to Space City. Come in, Space City. That's strange. They don't answer. Aren't we going to land, Steve? I'm trying to think, Venus. You know there was something strange about Commander Zero's voice. I think he was trying to warn us that we're walking into a trap. Okay, let's take a chance and land. We can't do much good up here anyway. Plot our course, Professor. It, right. It, it, give me a couple of minutes. If the XL5 isn't down soon, I shall use this ray gun. Why, if I could only get my hands on you! I can't insult all my kind. Landing trajectory one eight seven zero blue. One eight seven zero blue, fire retros. Firing retros. God, they have broken orbit. I prepare to launch missiles. Missiles? Yes, I have heard of this Steve Zodiac. I intend to take no chances. Will be blown out of the sky.
Quite a story. But I still don't see how you managed to overpower them. Oh, it was nothing. We were just on our toes. Isn't that right, Lieutenant? Whatever you say, sir. Well, I'm sorry to spoil your little act of heroism, gentlemen. But I have another explanation. What do you mean, Venus? Very simple, Steve. Our invaders collapsed with Restamesia, the space disease. Why, zero! You cheating old toot! Yeah, well, <laughs> well, they, uh, they they might have caught a touch of it after we, uh, after we, uh, oh, what's the use? Ah, uh, don't take it too badly, Commander. You did your best. Anyway, it's all over now. Well, not quite, Steve. There is just one more thing. Oh, what's that, Venus? Why? Inoculations for our two heroes, of course. Commander Zero, Lieutenant Ninety, roll up your sleeves. Okay, Lieutenant, you first. Uh, no, no, uh, after you, uh, uh, Commander. No, go right ahead, boy, you first. Uh, uh, oh, no, sir, uh, no, sir, you, you, your rank, uh, sir. Lieutenant, you first. This is an order. Yes, sir. It won't hurt a bit. <laughs> I wish I was a spaceman, the fastest guy alive. I'd fly you around the universe in Fireball XL5. Way out in space together, conquers of the sky. My heart would be a fireball, a fireball. Every time I gazed into your starry eyes. We'd take the path to Jupiter, and maybe very soon We'd cruise along the Milky Way, and land upon the moon To a wonderland of stardust, we'll zoom our way to Mars My heart would be a fireball, a fireball Cause you would be my Venus of the stars Sit down here with me They're here for you on your TV They are the moments They are the moments So come with me, give me your hand I'll take you up to moon land You can fly just like a bird You sing the best song I ever heard There were the moments 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 <laughs> Oh, 
Papa, I think that rope is getting loose. Okay, Moomin, you'd better have a look before this wind has the whole tent down. Aye, aye, Captain. A sudden storm has hit the Happy Fattener's Island. Moomin Papa has decided that it would be far safer to stay the night on the island. So they put up the tent and moored the boat. This will show us what the weather's up to. That's as long as it's still working. I'm sure it's going to die down really soon. Well, wake up, Mr. Hamelin. When the storm clears, we must give this barometer straight back to the Hattie Fatteners. Oh, I quite fancy keeping it myself to remind me of the island. You know, it seems to work after all. But Mr. Hamelin, that'll only remind you of the horrible Hattie Fatteners. What about all the tons of plants you found? That surely is going to be enough? Yes, I know, but there was only really one special flower amongst all those plants, and I nearly missed that one. Look, isn't it a beauty? I discovered it as I was about to tie up the boat. Oh, woman, Papa. Yes, Mr. Hamlin. You know, when you all went to put up the tent, you told me to tie up the boat so she was safe. Yes, of course. Well, I'm not sure if I did. Not sure at all. Please try to remember, Mr. Hamelin. Yeah, I can't. It's all very unclear in my mind. If the boat's not here, we'll be stuck on the island forever and ever. Well, we pulled it well ashore, so it should be okay. But we'd better check on it as soon as we can. I'll go have a look. Quickly, moment. Be careful. I remember. I was just going to do it when I spotted this flower. Just by a rock, it was. Oh, dear. Come in. Boy, that was close. Tie it to the tree and make sure it's tight. Oh, that should do it. Just in time. You know, the waves must have been huge to have reached this far. Well, we saved the boat. Yes. Well, the storm will be over soon. Is everything okay? Yep, everything's fine. Oh, thank goodness. So we're not stranded after all. Huh? No. We needn't have worried. I'm very sorry. Really, I am. Are you all right, Snort Maiden? Now I am. According to this, the storm is blowing over now and it should stop raining soon. Well, the wind seems to have dropped. Oh, good. All that thunder and lightning is so noisy. Ah, right. I think I'll just go for a bit of a walk before I settle down for the night. But it's much too dark to see anything. The fresh air will do me good. Oh, ah, that's a good idea. I could do with some fresh air myself. Wait for me. I'll come too. Let me in quick. I'm What's the way. Ah! They're still there. Hundreds of them all glowing. The Hattie Fat Nurse. They're waiting for us. The lightning must have recharged them. Look at them all. I wonder what they want, Snuffkin. Such a heavy storm would have given them lots and lots of energy. Gosh, they're ready for anything. Oh, they're not coming any closer. They seem fairly friendly. Maybe they just want to see what we look like. No, I know what they're here for. Oh, what's that, Snufkin? It's their barometer, Moom and Papa. They know we've got it, and they've come to get it back from us. Yes, I think you're right, Snufkin. Mr. Hamelin? 
I do think you'd better give it back to them. Do I have to? Yes, of course. After all, it is theirs, and there are a lot of them. Look, why don't you take it out to them now? <sighs> you know, the barometer does belong to them, Mr. Emily. Oh, dear, dear. Give it to me. Let me do it, Papa. Well done, my boy. You must be careful, my dear. Don't worry, Mama. Oh, boy, isn't he brave? I think this is what you've come for. Here you are. You can have it back now. something. I'm real glad there's no electricity where we live. Oh, they didn't hurt you, did they? Ah! Go away! Leave her alone! Are you all right, Snork Maiden? What did he do to you? Just a bit of shock, that's all. What's that funny smell? <gasps> oh my golly, it's your hair! What? What do you... What do you mean? What's happened to it? Oh no, my hair! Mama! Mama! Where's your mirror? Oh, Mama! Oh, look at what those wicked Hattie Fatteners have done. It's here in my handbag somewhere. Hurry, Mama! I must see what's happened to my hair! Here you are, dear. Look at me! Look at me! It's awful! It's horrible! It's horrible! Don't worry. We'll put some magic ointment on and it'll come back all lovely and curly. I don't want nasty curly hair. I want my long beautiful hair like it was before. <laughs> you know, it really doesn't matter to me, Snort Maiden. <laughs> Gone? Oh, good. I hope that's the last we see of them. Oh, dear, what's happened to Snork Maiden? My hair, my hair, where's my hair?
wonder where they're going. Perhaps they're sailing away to a secret island. Somewhere very far away from here, where they can live happily on their own, together. Gosh, Snufkin, they're really weird. Well, it depends on how you look at it, Moomin. They probably think we're a bit strange, too. You're really horrible. You knew I wanted to see them. Come on, you were fast asleep, snoring your head off. That wasn't me snoring, that was Mr. Hemulin. All right, if you say so. Well, I hope that's the last I'll see of them. Me too. That's a very pretty scarf, Snork made him. Yes, it is, isn't it? Can we go exploring, Mama? I don't see why not. It looks as though it'll be a nice day, and there'll be lots of exciting things washed up by the storm. Oh, that'll be fun. Let's look for the other side of the island. What a good idea. I might discover some more plants. <laughs> Interesting. Just think, we could find all sorts of things lying on the sand. I hope it's secret sunken treasure. Well, let's hope it's not sunken anymore. I expect there'll be lots and lots of treasures from shipwrecks and things like that. Bet I find it before you! Oh, no, you won't. Look at all this! It's all mine! I'm gonna dive in! What's that over there? It's quite shallow right here. Well, there must be something hidden in it. Oh dear, it's empty! I think I found something here. Little Mai! Little Mai! What's the matter? Come and see these beautiful shells I have. I'm too busy hunting for treasure to bother with shells. Ah. Hey, what's this? <coughs> oh, look at this one. I've got a real collection here. They'll look lovely in Mama's garden. Wow, what's that? What? I can't find any as nice as yours. Don't be in such an awful hurry, little Mai. Snark Maiden! Snark Maiden! Look! Look what I found! A proper treasure! Look! Oh! There's snow inside of it. I found it in a cave. What is it? What's this? It's a ship's telescope. You can see for miles with it. I'll give it to Papa. It's better than anything I got. Hey, everybody. I found something. Come on up and have a look. I wish I could find something interesting. Have you found some buried treasure? What a big lady! Is she dead? It's made of wood, Snork Maiden. It's a figurehead from a ship. She's like a queen! Ha! She hasn't got any legs, though. Why don't we put her on the front of our boat? Nah, it's much too heavy. It must have come from a ship that was wrecked. And sank at sea? Perhaps it did. And all hands were lost. 
lost. I want to take it home. What would you do with it? Use her to frighten people away. Help! Somebody help me, please! That's old Mr. Hamulin. Gosh, I hope it's not more Hattie Fatteners. Someone help, please! We're coming! Why do you like this old figurehead so much? You're staring at her. She's not all that special, you know. Yes, I know. She's not even real. Only made of wood. Ah. Oh. Do you like her eyes? Mm. Or is it her hair? <laughs> Just because I haven't got any. Nearly there. Just a bit further. Come on, snuff. Get fine. Pull harder. Come on. <laughs> Uh, oh. You're very heavy, Mr. Hemulin. Uh, oh. 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 Thank you, Snuffkin. Uh. You saved my life. Oh. Oh. Boy, how'd you end up in there, Mr. Hemulin? One minute I was looking for plants, the next I'd fallen right into that hole. I think you'd be safer collecting stamps, Mr. Hemulin. Oh, no, it's not here. Where is it? Oh. Oh. What is it now? Oh. Oh. Tell me. Ah, uh, may the booboo preserve me. Calm down, Mr. Hemulin. Tell me what's the matter. My sample box, my sample box. Oh, my goodness. You didn't leave it in the hole, did you? Yes, that's what I'm trying to tell you. Oh, dear. All my precious samples. I'm so silly. Oh, Snuffkin. Oh, oh Snuffkin, would you mind? Okay, anything for some peace. Oh, dear boy, you are wonderful. You shall have one of my rarest plants as a reward. Indeed you shall. I shall choose a magnificent one for you. Thank you very much, Mr. Hemulin. Gosh, I wonder where Moomin is. Oh, there you are. What have you been up to? He can't take his eyes off that silly wooden lady. He just stares at her. Really? I do not. I just think she has a very beautiful face. Well, Moomin, now that you're here, I could really do with your help. What do you want, Snufkin? Mr. Hemulin dropped his box of samples down this hole, and I'm going to try and get it. I didn't drop it. I fell in the hole and just forgot it when Snufkin pulled me out. I... <sighs> you're a bit absent-minded, Mr. Hemulin. No, I'm not. I can remember every Latin name of every single plant, you know. <laughs> okay, I'll go down, Moomin, but you'll have to help me get back up. Okay. I'll help you too. Now be careful. Can you see it yet, Snuffkin? I'm not down at the bottom yet. Oh, forgive me. I'm sorry. I found it. Wonderful. Tell me, are the plants all right? You can check them yourself in a minute. Oh. Are you all right, Snuffkin? Wait a minute. I found something else. There's the boat! It's Moomin Mama and Moomin Papa! Oh. Hello! It's gold! Hello! We've been hunting treasure! Go and get Moomin Papa! I found gold! Boy, oh boy, I wonder how much there is. Moomin Papa will know. Well, Moom and Papa, what should we do with all this beautiful gold? Mm, it would look lovely in the garden, don't you think? With all the shells that the Snork Maiden found, they'll look good in amongst the roses. What do you think, Mama? I'm sure they will, Papa. I'm sure they will. Moomin, she's only a stupid legless doll. You can have my bowl full of snow, Snork Maiden. No, thanks. Well, I'll look after it for you. I can pretend it's my treasure. Oh. And that was the end of their first adventure in the new boat. Moom and Papa decided that it was much more fun to set off without maps and sea charts. You never know where you might end up.
They love the laughter and they love the living, the moments. Believing and sharing and caring and giving, the moments. They're always happy and always at play. The moments are having fun day after day, the moments. The laughter and they love the living, the moments. Believing and sharing and caring and giving, the moments. They're always happy and always at play. The moments are having fun day after day, the moons. For action. We are about to launch Stingray. Anything can happen in the next half hour. to give you a certificate of undersea worthiness for your craft. I agree with you, Commander. I've seen their tub. Couldn't there be some truth in what they say? Troy, you don't mean you've fallen for this crazy legend about a gem forest beneath the sea? It's ridiculous. Well, uh, no, sir, but I think Stingray ought to go check it out. You never know. There's been a whole heap of rumors lately. A forest that grows jewels? Ah! This is Marineville, Tempest, not Fairyland. Some people need to move with the times. I heard that, Tempest. I may be old, but I'm sure not deaf. You are dismissed, Captain. You two guys still here? I already told you, your craft's not fit for deep dives. Now, please, get out. <laughs> Pet cat's going just great, man. Yeah, for my money, I'd run up the fathoms, Dad, and dive. Yeah, say, how about that? Who needs any old certificate, anyhow? Let's light out to Deepsville, man, and to Jonah with Commander Daddy-O. You mean like, uh, crash the waves without a ticket? Yeah, why not? There could be a fortune in bright stuff waiting for us down there. Let's, uh, make like the fishies. On the button, buddy boy. Four miles on the nose. Yeah, and that brass hat in Squaresville said Hepcat would give, you know, like a uh, folder. Like the Cat Tempest gave out. The commander's ancient dad. Hey, like, what's with your bones, man? They're creaking. You know me, dad. I had an oil check before we let out from Lansville. Then why the music? Oh, 
relax. So we've got some creaks. We should flip. Crazy, Dad. We're shipping the wet stuff. Like make with the pumps, man, or we'll be fish food. Danger, Bill, man. The pumps are piling up the seas. Like uh, sleeping on the job. You mean, you mean like she's folded? Yeah, pressure. Commander daddy o said it. Hepcat's dead, man. A daisy pusher. See, that means this is like the end. Maybe, unless we hit Marineville's wavelength with our talking box. Sure, sure, sure. The radio marker. Uh, I'll move it out now. Let's hope those cats pick up our whales. There's an emergency SOS coming in. Have Stingray crews standing by. Sound action stations. Yes, sir. Say, that code, it's Hepcats. Those two young fools must have disobeyed me and gone down. Sound launch stations. Acceleration rate six. Heading for SOS call. The crazy idiots. We told them their ship couldn't do it. Guess the lure of that legendary gem for us was too great. Yeah, how about that? Do you think it could exist? Well, like I told the commander, down here anything's possible. But I guess there's no evidence to even suggest a forest of jewels. There she is. Yeah, that's Hepcat, okay. Get my skin suit and gear. Hepcat from Stingray. Come in, Hepcat. Can you hear me? Come in, Hepcat. Are you okay? Uh, hi, uh, Stingray. Uh, guess we're running out of the oxygen, Jazz. Uh, you know, like, uh, breathless man. Okay, Hepcat. I'm going to bring an airline over and pump some buoyancy into your tanks to get you to the surface. Let's hope the tanks aren't punctured. Oh, great, Dad. Say, my buddy pal is uh, coming out of Dreamsville. Okay, I'll be with you in a few minutes. Mm -hmm. Oh, wow, oh, what gives, man? Uh, the Cat Tempest is uh, coming over like soon with some of the uh, life breeze. Uh, you know, an airline. Okay, phones. Airlines in position. Start the pumps. Okay, Skipper. Pumps operating. Okay, Hepcat. We'll see you on the surface. Release the airline. Cool, man. Lifeline away. And thanks. <laughs> Say, what's that? Bones, I'm going back to check something out. There's something shining on the seabed. Okay, Troy, but watch your air supply. You only took one cylinder with you.
Phones. I, I've fallen down an undersea crevasse. I've lost my buoyancy. I can't move. Troy, your air, it must be running down mighty low. I'm coming to get you. Yeah. Guess my air is nearly finished. And my leg, it hurts. Say, my air's gone. I, I can't breathe. Phones, I'm suffocating. Can't breathe. My head, it, it aches. I'm finished. Suffocating. Gotta get air. Gotta get air. breathing still, but I've got no air. I can't be breathing, but I am. I'm living without air, yet I'm still alive. I'm breathing. I'm breathing. Say, why should I need air anyway? I can live down here, okay? Who needs air? What do I want this crazy mask for? Gee, I feel great now. Yeah, let's get rid of this air cylinder. This is great. I feel like a million dollars. Gee, I've never seen plants like this. They're beautiful. I don't believe it, but it's there, the forest of gems. Say, these leaves, they're made of gold and silver, diamonds, rubies, emeralds. I found the gem forest, it really exists. I'm rich! Yippee! I must be the richest man in the world! I'm the richest man in the whole wide world! Oh, Great One, do you require anything? Yeah. Guess you can peel me another grape. Marina, play something sweet and gentle. It's great being the richest man in the world. Oh, great one, I have important news. A craft from the terrain approaches. Oh, yeah. Send it away. I don't want any visitors today. But, Master, it's Stingray, all the way from Marineville. Now, what do they want? I've finished with my old life, and they know it. But they've come a long way, oh, great one. Okay, let them in if that's what they want.
Tempest Towers to Stingray. You have permission to enter. Stingray has entered the airlock, oh great one. Okay, let them in. Tempest Towers to Stingray. Please pass down the corridor from airlock and enter by southern door. Troy, I've come to ask you to reconsider. Return to Marineville with me. Give up this life. It's making you soft. Give it up? Are you crazy, Commander? Give up all my riches? Never. But the service needs you. It's your duty. I'm the leader here. I decide what is my duty. Is that your last word? Yes, Commander. It is. Can't you talk some sense into him, Phones? I'll try, Commander. I figure he should return to Marineville, too, but... Phones! I can hear you! Traitor! Commander Shore, I'll thank you to leave my palace. Okay, I'm going. But never ask me for anything ever again. <laughs> Why should I ask him? I have everything here. Everything. Haven't I, honey? Why, sure, Troy. We don't need anyone. Yeah, everything's perfect. Just one thing. I sure wish you could talk, Marina. Still, guess that's one thing that'll never happen. You're wrong, Troy. You see, I can speak. In a way. Marina, was that you? But your lips weren't moving. No, Troy. But you can hear my thoughts. Gee, this is great. Now I have got all I want. that? Ooh. We're under attack. Well, don't just stand there. Do something. Well, what do you suggest, O Great One? We have no defenses. get in. What are we going to do? You tell me. You're the one who has everything. Yeah, but they're trying to take it all away from me.
my palace, all my riches. This on, oh great one. It'll save you, Troy. Don't fight me. Take it easy, Troy. Relax. You're okay now, Troy. Just rest. Relax. Now, just take it easy. Phones. Where, where am I? The palace is crashing down. But this is Stingray. How did I get here? What happened? You had a touch of raptures of the deep, Troy. What? What are you talking about? Well, it's true, Troy. I guess that fall into the crevasse and then your air tank giving out sent you into a kind of drunkenness. Yeah, I've heard of it. Raptures of the deep, eh? Well, what do you know? But it was so clear. You could speak, Marina. Or at least I could hear your thoughts. I'm afraid not, Troy. Th that's the way lack of air affects you down there. Uh, so there was no palace, eh? No forest, no gems? I guess not. Say, wait, I put some gems in my belt. Yeah, I remember now. Two of the biggest diamonds I've ever seen. Say, there is something here. See, what did I tell you? They're not diamonds. They're just plain, ordinary seashells. That's right, but I, I guess you could call them the, the gems of the sea. How about your palace? Are you disappointed that it never existed? Oh, no, sir. I was real mean down there. Give me Stingray every time. Oh, that's great. Now, you go get some rest. I'll take those two crazy hepcats in tow, and we'll head for Marineville. Yep, let's go. I guess I've got some explaining to do to Commander Shore. Say 
that you'll always stay close to my Here they are for one and all The moments are about to call Come on and sit down here with me They're here for you on your TV They are the moments They are the moments So come with me, give me your hand I'll take you up to moment land You can fly just like a bird And sing the best song ever heard There with the moments There were 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 the moments Ba 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 The seeds that Moomin and his friends had found in a box that had been cast up on the beach had grown into a tropical forest. It was beautiful, but also dangerous, with man-eating plants kept at bay by Snufkin playing his harmonica. But for how long? Snufkin, don't stop playing your harmonica, whatever you do. They'll only get angry and attack us all over again. If I don't stop soon, I might never want to play again. Well, perhaps the music has made them more friendly. Well, be careful, Mr. Hemelin. Oh, don't worry. sure the trap door won't open again. Ah, yes. What's this about a trap door? In the kitchen. They almost got in before and attacked Mama. We reached her just in time. Ah, there they are. I feel sorry for them. It can't be helped, Snufkin. If we let them out, we'll be eaten alive. It makes me feel very uncomfortable having man-eating plants under the floor. Always keep a kettle of boiling water handy in case they break through. The children are playing Tarzan. <laughs> they might as well, seeing as they've got a jungle to play in. 
Still, planting those seeds might have been a terrible mistake. Well, Mama, I'm very glad that you did. Just think what I would have missed. And Moomin Valley suddenly being full of tropical plants is wonderful. I'm not fond of traveling, as you know. And you've brought the plants to me. Well, the trees make it much cooler. But those man-eaters, I could do without them. <laughs> Just like Tarzan. Tarzan loves Jane. Oh, what bliss! I... Yeah. Stinky's over there. Stinky. Tarzan teach old Maddie's lesson. Yaha! Pretty stupid moment playing Tarzan without wild well, animals. animals don't come from seeds. No, but you need them to have a real jungle. I can get you some if you want. Really? I'll do anything for my friends. That's very kind of you. Not too wild, though. No lions or tigers or anything. Maybe a baby chimpanzee. I know exactly what you need. <laughs> Cheese. Bread. Ah. What are you doing, Mama? Well, I don't like the thought of all those man-eaters still in the cellar. So your father and I are going to sleep in the bathhouse. We'll sleep outdoors, too. We've just built ourselves a hut. Snork Maiden and Little Mai, too. Well, yes, there's plenty of room. Oh, right. So that only leaves Mr. Hemulin sleeping in the house. And he's still busy checking all the different plants. Mama, is everything ready? Oh, yes, dear. Oh, off already? Yes, we are, Mr. Hemulin. See you later. Stinky said he could get some wild animals, Papa. Wherever from? I don't know. I wouldn't trust him. He'll probably put a hedgehog in your sleeping bag. There it is, the hut. Oh, ho. very well built. <laughs> yeah. Wonderful place, you'll love it. A real tropical jungle. Are you sure it's quite nice here? Of course I am. There you are. Oh. to run free. Darling, let's be the first to get to Moomin Valley. Soon I'll have the largest collection in the botanic world, and I will be famous, and people will come from all over. Now, what have we here? Go away, I'm not a zoologist. Look, Moomin, those must be the monkeys Stinky promised well, us. Well, that's a surprise. Not like him at all. I just don't trust him. <laughs> what sweet things. Just like in Tarzan. Oh, what was that? I don't know. Ah! 
That sounds like some really wild animal. A lion or a tiger. I'm frightened, Moomin. Huh? Very odd, just like home, isn't it? Even if it isn't very big. Perhaps we could live here. Let's go hunting first. I smell woman's. <laughs> oh, be careful, darling. You're very out of practice. Must have been imagination. Moomin! Keep quiet! Little Moy! I've just seen some tigers. They're coming to get you! Tigers? Let's get back to the house quick! There's no time. They're nearly here. We'll go to the bathhouse. Shall we eat him up? You know that Hemulens upset your tummy, dearest. I wonder where the Moomins are. Huh? Hmm? Oh, just more animals, that's all. What's the matter, Moomin? Little Mai has seen two tigers and they're looking for tigers us. Tigers after us? That rotten stinky probably told them that we're good to eat or something. Maybe we are. They'll be here in a minute. Right, Moomin, you go and find the biggest stone you can and bring it back with you. Okay. This way. Papa, will this one do? Yes, that's perfect. Right, get into the bathhouse and it quickly now. Here they come. <gasps> Are you really going to eat them, dearest? Of course, my love. You see, I think they're hiding in that little house up there. They're being very quiet if they are. Huh. <laughs> they're just too scared to move, that's all. Why's that stone there? Well, of course, Moomin. My husband is drowning. Oh, I'm so sorry. Papa, we must help. Uh, he was just about to try and eat us, Mama. I'm sure he won't do it again. Oh. I suppose so, Moomin. Thought I'd see the day. Moomin's rescuing a tiger. <laughs> Here you are, dear. Tie this tightly around him and we'll lift him out. Thank you, Mama. What happened, 
Did we eat them? No, you were drowning and they rescued you. Who? How embarrassing. Well, they're in that cabin behind you if you still feel hungry, but it was rather good of them to save you. No, my appetite's completely gone. Well, come back here then and we'll go. I'll just jump over. Oh! What's the matter? I can't remember how to jump. We've been stuck in that zoo for too long. Well, try and swim across, dearest. Okay. Hmm? Wake up, everyone! The tigers are leaving! I'm glad he didn't drown. I knew they wouldn't be mean enough to eat us after saving him. Uh, shall we jump in and swim back as well? It's not far. Yes! I'll go first! I want to go first! Don't, little mine! Be careful, Moomin! Look over there! Crocodiles! Oh, hurry up, Moomin! Swim around the back and come up the ladder! There'll be crocodiles in the sea. I thought they only lived in fresh water. How are we going to get back to the shore now? We'll have to wait for a boat to come past. No, I'm afraid we'll have to think of something else, Mama. We could uh, be waiting for a week or so for that to happen. A whole week? But we'll starve. All they'll find is our bones bleached white in the sun. Don't worry, little Mai. Papa will think of something. You'll see. Good morning. Snufkin, and what a relief. I was going to go sea fishing, but I changed my mind. I didn't fancy landing a sea monster. Help! Someone help! Help anybody! It's Mr. Hemulin. Oh, the tigers must be after him quickly. so cross. I just told you not to eat my plants. Help! Please, someone, anyone, help! Oh, 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 let me in! Oh, 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 oh. That fella's always been clumsy. We can't really help him. No. Oh, 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 are you all right, Hemulin? Oh, dear, I think so. What about him? Oh, dear. What do you do when a rhino gets stuck in your brander? Oh, this is a new one on me. Saw him loose. I can't think of any other way. You have to be very careful, though. Oh, I think you're right. Ah, look where you're going. It was you who brought all the animals in, wasn't it? Yes, you're right. That's what you wanted. It's a jungle now. I did a good job. Oh, really? Well, they're not wild animals at all. They're quite friendly. Friendly? See what I mean? They make very good pets. Cute, aren't they? Uh... Snake! Oh, Snake, where are you? What do you want? The rhino and the tigers have become pets of the Moomin family. You're not gonna let that happen to you. Well, are you? Of course not. I'll bring Snork Maiden and Moomin here tonight. There's no need to eat all of them. Just bite off their tails, all right? Okay. You'll be really amazed, like I was. It's big enough for both of you to sit on. 
How lovely! A giant water lily! I wonder if the seeds came from that box you all found. Oh, I can't wait to see it! Looking at the size of the jungle, there must have been an awful lot of seeds in that box. I suppose the wind could have blown them anywhere. Where's the giant water lily? Uh, let's see now. Uh, uh, over there. Oh. How wonderful. You see, I wish you'd learn to trust me. I'm a very honest guy. It's so soft and pink and beautiful. <laughs> How romantic to be on a boat made from a flower. This is unbelievable. Our old box seems to have grown into a tropical swamp. It's a lot nicer. Hey, Stinky! Stinky? Oh. I can't see him anywhere. I wonder how far we'll float. It's getting dark, Moomin. <laughs> We must get away! Where? I don't know. Yes. Look, there's the sea. But the crocodiles. Over there, Snark made a... a boat. Well, it's the only way we'll get away from this monster. Moomin and Snork Maiden kept swimming as fast as they could. They had a head start on the snake, but now he was catching up. Even though Moomins are very good swimmers, unfortunately for them, so are snakes. They love the laughter and they love the living, the Moomins. Believing and sharing and caring and giving, the Moomins. They're always happy and always at play The Moomins are having fun day after day The Moomins The Moomins They love the laughter and they love the living The Moomins Believing and sharing and caring and giving They're always happy and always at play The Moomins are having fun day after day The Moomins The Moomins The Moomins of Thunderbirds, Jerry Anderson brings you five legendary television productions. Fireball XL5, starring Steve Zodiac. All I know is that somewhere out there there's a living creature in distress. I can't let that call go unanswered. If you ever knew Steve Zodiac not help anyone in trouble, Space 1999 stars Martin Landau Fire! and Barbara Bain. Party of seven, our goddess's party. Should have been back hours ago. The Secret Service. This is an assignment for the Bishop. British Intelligence Service Headquarters. Operation Priest. Starring Father Stanley Unwin, the country vicar who's also a secret agent. All that true words, speed of your pen slow must deceive my eyeballs. Supercar, starring Mike Mercury. We are ready to blow. I repeat, we are ready to blow in 60 seconds from now. Repeat, 60 seconds. It's the marvel of the age. 
The Protectors, the worldwide freelance crime-fighting organization starring Robert Vaughan. This is Harry Root. I want time on the computer. Nairi Dawn Porter. Never neglect the police. They can be very useful. And Tony Anhalt. Right. We spotted the girl. What about the right? Even with a telescopic sight, it can't be that far away. But there's no sign of it. Keep looking. Five fantastic adventures from the amazing world of Jerry Anderson.